everyone, I'm Amy. I'm Lauren, and this is Rocky. I'm Elsie, and this is Pickles. And we live in De Pere, Wisconsin. I've been a member at Hope for just over 12 years, um, and Lauren and Elsie were both baptized there. Wishing to see everyone soon in 2021. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As they called an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have the opportunity to speak together responsively words from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is from Jonah, chapter 3. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, <clears throat> Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the proclamation which I am going to tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three days walk. Then Jonah began to go through the city one day's walk. And he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Then the people of Nineveh believed in God, and they called, for, they called a fast and put on sackcloth with the greatest, from the greatest to the least of them. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. But this I say, brethren, the time has been shortened, so that from now on, those of you, those who have wives, should be as though they had none, and those who weep, as though they did not weep, and those who rejoice, as though they did not rejoice, and those who buy, as though they did not possess. And those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it. 
for the form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. I'd invite you to stand, please, for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he was going along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went away to follow him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, Come Follow Me, the Savior Spake. Put that down for a catch. A little farther out. I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. At 
your word. brother and the baptizer. <laughs> you are the Lamb of God, yes? I am. Depart from me. I am a sinful man. You don't know who I am and the things I've done. Don't be afraid, Simon. I'm sorry. We, we've waited for you for so long. We believe, but my faith, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lift up your head, fisherman. <laughs> what do you want from me? Anything you ask, I will do. You as well. Yes, you, James and John. Come, follow me. I'll take the fish to the market and settle up Simon's death. I'll get some help to fill both of these boats. Are you sure? Yes, go. What will you tell Ima? <laughs> We've just been called by the man we prayed for our entire lives. And you ask me, what will I say when you miss supper? <laughs> Go now. What would qualify for you as an opportunity that you could simply not pass up if you were given the chance? Tickets to Sunday's NFC Championship game at Lambeau Field? A three-minute shopping spree at your favorite store, perhaps? 
a parent, a friend, grabbing you on a warm summer evening and saying, hey, let's go grab some ice cream. A chance to spend an afternoon with your favorite celebrity or perhaps a public figure you really respect. Perhaps some of you can think back to the moment when the person you really liked finally asked you out on that date. You'll clear the calendar. You'll do anything it takes to make it happen. Of course, President Biden was sworn into office, and we're hearing news of the folks that he is choosing to join him in his cabinet. I suppose if you had political aspirations, receiving such a nod would also qualify as one of those opportunities that you couldn't refuse. When such a moment comes along, one of those clear, can't-refuse moments, how long does it take you to make up your mind? Not very long. The opportunity is so compelling that deliberation isn't even necessary. Today, such an offer comes to Simon and Andrew, to James and to John, And in truth, it comes to you and to me as well. Our gospel reading details the beginning of Jesus' public ministry following his baptism by John. And this beginning is marked by two invitations, one that is general and is likely shared with many people at once, and one invitation that is intensely personal. First, that general invitation I'd like to share with you from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. We have this language from John's gospel. I'm sorry, from Mark's gospel. Now, after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. These words might sound familiar to us, and as a result, we might be tempted to let them uh, pass by quickly. Let's pause for a moment. Consider what Jesus is actually saying here. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Can we even begin to imagine how big a pronouncement this is? Faithful believers And God had been waiting for this time, this moment for generations, even for thousands of years. God had promised to Adam and Eve, an offspring of the woman who would undo the work of the deceiving serpent. God had promised to Abraham, an offspring who would be a blessing to all the nations. God had promised to Moses, And the Israelites, that he would raise up for them a prophet like Moses, one who would act with might and reveal God's truth. God had promised David, a son, who would reign on his throne forever. Through Isaiah, God had promised a servant who would stand in the place of Israel and take away their sin through his suffering and through his vindication. The Jews of Jesus' day knew these promises. They longed for them to be fulfilled. Even ordinary fishermen like Simon and Andrew, James and John, would have been schooled in these promises with their parents as they shared the stories of God's word in their homes, as they attended the synagogue on the Sabbath day and heard God's word there. The time is fulfilled, Jesus says. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, that is, turn away from your sin and back to God and believe in the gospel and the good news. This is a million times bigger than a party getting their guy into the White House or the home team getting to host the Super Bowl play-in game at home. The kingdom of God is at hand because God's chosen king has arrived on the scene in real flesh and blood 
whatever you were doing before, it's time to turn. It's time to believe. But then, the invitation gets intensely personal. Jesus moves from proclaiming to the crowds to choosing individuals. We hear this in Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 16. As he was going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will have you become fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were also in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went away to follow him. On one hand, it's something to hear the proclamation that God's kingdom is coming in the person of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit to believe him and the good news that he comes to bring. But with this next call, the call that Jesus extends to these four men who are out there on the water, all of life is reoriented. Livelihoods are left behind as a new opportunity is embraced. Follow me. They didn't know it yet. But this calling would bring with it suffering and deep sadness at times. At least three of these four men would ultimately be martyred for the sake of Jesus' name with the possible exception of John, who will spend his years as an old man, as an exile on an island prison, much like first century Alcatraz. But having heard the promises, and now having seen them fulfilled in the coming of the King, the response, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is a no-brainer. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Now, to be fair, not everyone responds to the call of Jesus in the exact same way in the Gospels. On one occasion, we hear of Jesus calling someone to follow him, but he wants to wait. He wants to wait until his mother and father have passed away, and then he will go and follow Jesus. On another occasion, Jesus meets with a rich young man who wants to know what is necessary for him to inherit eternal life after running through the commandments Jesus says, one thing you lack, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. And we're told that that young man leaves sad because he has great possessions. I think we can relate to those guys. We too have complicated family entanglements. We too have it pretty comfortable by the world's standards. Jesus comes along. He says, follow me. He meets you and me in the water, the water of baptism, so that we know that the call is for us and not just for the person sitting next to us. Do we follow? If your story is anything like mine, the answer might be yes, with the overwhelming help of God's grace. (laughs) For left to ourselves, we turn aside over and over again. Maybe not completely away, but aside to so many cares and concerns tied to this life. We cultivate our reputation We attend to our comfort. We seek to buy happiness. We get excited about things that have very little kingdom significance. We hear of Jesus' first disciples messing things up and not seeing things clearly. And as we hear those stories, we breathe a sigh of relief. For if Jesus stuck with them, 
perhaps you'll stick with us. And he will. For to follow him is not just to strive and to suffer for his sake, but also to know his forgiveness for when we fail, his power for when we are weak, his presence for when we feel alone, and his peace when we're overwhelmed and we feel like things are falling apart. He calls us to follow, not as one who has callous disregard of those who follow him, but as a shepherd calls his sheep to follow after him. And with the call comes a promise. He says to you and to me again today, I will guard you. I will defend you. I will care for you. I will give my life that you may live. And I will never leave you. So do not be afraid. Follow me. Learn from my wisdom. Experience my love. Witness my courage as I testify to the truth. Experience my surprising humility. And see my power. My power over temptation. Power over sickness. Power over evil. Power over death in the grave. Follow me. Follow me, Jesus says again to you and to me today. Your life will never be the same. And that's good. (laughs) Because you were made for something far better than the world is able to offer. You were made for life with him. So may God bless us to hear the Savior's voice and to embrace his call anew today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds today and always in Christ Jesus, the one who calls. Amen. Having heard God's word, we respond together, speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed. I'd invite you please to stand as we speak these words. We join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ, Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold office in your church 
that by their service faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Father, for the gift of your goodness shown to those who celebrate your blessing in the form of birthdays. We lift up Scott Brandenburg, Nicole Sislevich, Josh Vanden Langenberg, Marvell Dietrich, Madeline Cuso, Trish Voss, and others who celebrate your goodness. We also pray Thanksgiving with Dennis and Ingrid Carr as they celebrate a wedding anniversary this coming week that you would look with favor upon them and increase their joy as they continue to place their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the governor and legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your blessing remain upon us in all the seasons of the year. Bless us in commerce and industry, in leisure and rest. Bless the arts and the culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor, and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Especially we lift up Charlotte as she heals. We pray for all those whose lives are impacted in any way by COVID-19. We lift up Landon Dickey as he continues uh, to grow and develop in the NICU. We pray for Bill Ackerman, Nicole Clevisall, Colleen Cummings, Caleb. We pray for Cheryl, for Bob, for Nicole, for Robert. We pray for Bob and Jack, Mark and Jen, John, members of Bob Gauze's family, Randy, Ella, Jody, Becky, Gail, Alan, Megan, and all those who are in need. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need. Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Let those affirm 